Well, well, what has the cat dragged in today? It's a tutorial on Plinko! Wrapping up our video sequence on this with this video, we've got the last component to put into place, and that is winning the game. So what we want to have happen is after all five boxes have been hit, we want to display a you win on the screen, and we want to get rid of the ball so that way the player knows that they are done. There's nothing else for them to do with this game. Let's get our canvas set up first. Now, in this video, I am not going to dig into the nitty gritty of the canvas system and how anchor points work. I have a separate video for that. So we're just going to take a look at this one very narrow specific instance of how do I get a basic you win up on the screen. All right. So in the hierarchy, I am going to right click and I'm going to come down here to UI and I am going to create text, keeping things simple. I'm going to call this LBL victory. Now, why on earth am I putting that LBL in front of it? That is a personal tick, I suppose, <laughs> for, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Um, I like to know whether or not text changes. It's a label. Or I mean, uh, text doesn't change. It's a label. Or if text changes. It's text, TXT. Um, that's just a little thing that I do to let myself know. It's like, is this static or is this dynamic? And in order to like properly position this, I am going to switch my camera to 2D and then I'm going to double click on my text. So that way I zoom out without having to give myself carpal tunnel syndrome by scrolling my mouse wheel a whole heck of a bunch. Now, by default, your anchor points should be in the center of the screen. If for some reason these little arrows are not in the center, make sure you click on the centering or the anchor point preset tool and get the anchors centered. And then drag the text box over. Now, I'm going to make this nice and big because I want this to be a very obvious sized box. So I'm going to do 350 by 100 for my size. For the text, the text is going to be you win, with an exclamation point. Of course, that's like really itty bitty text. So I am going to make it larger. Now, before I make it larger, I want to align it. I want this text to be in the dead center of this box. So I'm turning on both um, horizontal and vertical centering. And then I'll just grab the font size and slowly increase it until it disappears. So there we go. You win. Now that color's a little bit hard to see on this background. So I'm going to come down to the color property on the text. And this is kind of greenish, so I'm going to make my color just ever so lightly tinted blue. And there we go, that shows up a lot better. Of course, there's a lot more that I could do with this other than just super basic text, but that's the point of this tutorial series is let's keep things simple so we can get it done in a reasonable amount of time. So there we go, I have my UWIN text. I'll go ahead and close out my uh, color wheel there and I'm good to go. Now, obviously, I don't want this showing when the game first starts. So I'm going to go, I'm going to disable the whole canvas. There's lots of different ways that we could do this. I'm going to use the sort of brute force method, and I'm just going to take the canvas game object, and I'm going to disable it. And then I can come back and re-enable it according to my game logic. So that's the non-coding setup. Let's get into the coding. So I am going to go back into scripts here, and I'm going to go this time into game logic. 
Again, don't need any start method. It's going to immediately get rid of it. Now, game logic needs to know about a couple of things. Item number one, it needs to know about the canvas. I need to be able to set the canvas. So I am going to make this public. Capital C canvas. And I will call this the victory canvas. Item number two. I need to know about. I need to know about the ball because I need to get rid of it once I've won. So, oops, oh, not canvas. I am sorry. I, that is not at all the right thing as we would discover very, very quickly. Game object. Now, what's the difference you might be asking and why did I make that mistake? Um, and yes, this is going to cause horrible things to happen to my code. But let's see here. Hop back over to Unity real quick before going back over and finishing that thought. Canvas is a component. So this is the canvas component. So if I had left that variable as the canvas component, I would have been grabbing this, not the game object, which also happens to be called canvas. So I want the game object. That's what this box is for. This box is for the game object. So that is why I need game object here and not canvas. The other game object that I need is the ball, like I was saying. So game object ball. The other thing that I need to know is I need to know how many goals have been hit. And while I don't like one object being able to control another object's variables directly, it is the most direct, most obvious way of handling it. And so I am going to say public int um, goals. So I will be able to reference this variable and increase it from the goal script. Again, this is not proper object-oriented structuring of code. It is the most direct way of structuring the code and for small projects isn't necessarily bad. So it works well enough for our simple example here. Okay, update. What do I need to do here? Well, I need to ask the question, how many goals do I have? Have I got five? And actually, the way I'm going to phrase the question is I'm going to say, if goals is greater than or equal to five, there shouldn't be any conceivable possible way that I should somehow magically end up with six goals. But... Writing it this way ensures that if I have five, or somehow impossibly more, goals, I will win. If I wrote it like this, then if somehow I skipped over five, it would never process. So that's just me being paranoid more than anything else. So if my goals are greater than or equal to five, what do I need to do? Step one. Show the victory canvas. Victory canvas dot set active true. That's how you turn on a game object. Or, of course, set active false if you wanted to turn it off. The ball. I want to destroy it. I don't need it around anymore. Get rid of it. Finally. My job is done is the game logic. There's nothing else for me to do. So I need to get rid of myself. It would actually cause issues to not destroy this code because the first frame, the ball exists, I can destroy it. The second frame, the ball no longer exists but I'm still trying to destroy it. We could, of course, write code to work around that, but 
honestly, there's no reason for the game logic component to continue to exist after we've won. So just destroy it. One other change we got to make before we can test this. And that is giving goals the ability to access this information. Specifically, the ability to increase that hit counter. The most direct way of doing this is I'm going to put in a public reference. Now, this time I am going to put in a public reference to game logic. I don't need the game object that this is attached to. I need this specific component. So I'm going to say public game logic, lowercase game logic. And then what I need to do here is game logic dot can't remember my own variable names. Goals, there we go. Plus equals, which is again shorthand for, you know, uh, x equals x plus one or x plus equals one. So goals plus equals one. There we go. Should be able to test this. So this is goals or the goal logic pause if necessary. And then this is the game logic code. Again, pause if necessary to make sure you have all this down. Make sure all your stuff is saved. There is a convenient save all button right here that will save all modified scripts that are open. Hop back over to Unity. Now, something that I'm going to do to make testing easier, and this is also a good reason to sort everything, is I'm going to take my pegs game object here and I'm going to disable it because I'm not interested in actually playing the game right now. I'm interested in testing, did I forget to set anything? Which, in fact, I have. Quite a few things, actually. Uh, the goals all need to have a reference to game logic. So I'm going to select them all again. I am going to find game logic and drag it in. There we go. Now all my goals have a reference to game logic. And then on my game logic script, I need to set a reference to my canvas or the game object that holds my canvas. And I need to set a reference to the game object for my ball. Hit the play button. Launch, launch. There we go. Excellent. Last one. Perfect. You win. The colors changed, worked correctly. I can turn my pegs back on. Save my scene. Congratulations. You have yet another fully functional game. And this could be relatively easy to expand. You, this would be something that you could easily create multiple levels on with different peg arrangements, different sizes. Uh, you could actually make some where... Uh, hitting certain pegs could give you more points or maybe even just add in a point system. <clears throat> All sorts of things that you can do. But that concludes the project as it was envisioned. Hopefully you've enjoyed this sequence. Thumbs up would be appreciated if you have. And as always, if you didn't learn much, you didn't enjoy it, give me that thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. Until the next video tutorial.